My name is Ryan Day and you're watching live stream Sunday here at Wrightsdale Baptist Church. Thanks for joining us today. It has been a challenging week for our church family, but we're gathered here today to celebrate the hope that we have in our Savior. We're going to open God's Word today in a brand new sermon series entitled When Life Happens. And let's get started with a special adventure lab with Mr. T, who's going to show us what happens when things go wrong at home. Wayfinders, follow the way. Follow the way. Who's the way? Jesus. That's right. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We follow the way all the way. That means we follow Jesus with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Now we've all been home for a couple of weeks now, and I'm sure there's a few things that haven't gone the way that you've wanted. Do we freak out? Or do we faith out and let Jesus guide how we respond? Let's look at some scenarios of when things go wrong at home. Honey, I made your breakfast. Cereal again. Uh-oh, that didn't go the way that Carter wanted. Let's see what happens. I don't want this. Well, freaking out isn't the answer. Let's see what a faith out looks like. It's not my favorite. Thanks for taking care of me. Uh-oh, Jack seems really annoyed by Marigold. What's he gonna do? Let's see what a freak out would look like. Yikes, we don't wanna do that. Jack should do a faith out instead. Wow, that's a cool song. Can I show you one I know? We all know that freaking out is not the right way to go. Why not have a faith out instead? How do you do it? Step one, stop! Don't do anything until you get to step two, which is pray. Talking to God invites Him to change our hearts and to give us His love. That changes everything. The last step in having a faith out is remembering the example of Jesus in the Bible. God wants to make us more like Jesus every day. It says so in His Word. Titus 2, 11-12 says this, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no, no to ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. That means when things don't go the way we want, we can let our faith in Jesus shine through by letting God guide how we respond. great unknown where feet may fail and there I find you in the mystery in oceans deep my faith will stand and I will call upon your name my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for i am yours and you are mine your grace abounds in deepest water your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where 
feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you never failed and you won't start now. As your love in wave after wave crashes over me, crashes over champion of heaven you made a way for all to enter in spirit lead me where my trust is without borders let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me take me than my feet could ever wander and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Would you bow your heads with me and let's go to the Lord in prayer and then we'll open God's word together. Our Father, we come to you on this Sunday morning and Lord, despite the adversity and challenges that are going on all around us, Lord, your word tells us that this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you that even in tumultuous times, we have you as our solid rock to stand upon and Lord, our hope is in you. And we just thank you for the scriptures that we can come to this morning. Lord, as we begin this new sermon series, I pray that you will use your word in powerful ways, not only to speak truth into our hearts, but Lord, that you would just fill us with encouragement, that you would fill us with hope, and Lord, that we would see that you are our help. Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity that we have, even as we're scattered about in our homes and in various living rooms and family rooms. Lord, we are still united together in spirit and in purpose. We are your people. And we, so we, we call out to you today, Lord, and we ask you to feed us by the living word of God. Give us good food today. Lord, cause us to grow by it so that we can go out into this world and be the disciples of Jesus and to, and to trust you and to live for you day by day. Lord, meet with us now and help us as we study your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, have you ever tried a home remedy before? A home remedy is a non-professional, improvised medical treatment that is comprised of things that are typically found at home. I know throughout my lifetime I have been subject to a whole host of home remedies over the years, and you probably have too. How many of us were home sick with the flu when we were just kids and, and our moms prepared for us that giant bowl of chicken noodle soup? Or maybe your mom made you that special homemade breathing treatment with, with the warm steam that came rising up from a, from a pot of boiling water. You know, friends, when we experience a headache or some heartburn or even a sore throat, most of us have some basic ideas about what we can do that will bring relief in that situation. But what do we do when the pain is more than physical? Where do we go when our souls are hurting? Where do we go when our spirits are feeling overwhelmed with anxiety and stress or even fear? Where do we turn for help when that close friend turns against us 
or our finances are in shambles, or when our future is uncertain. Well, believers, praise God. When life happens, we can open the scriptures to an incredible book that's called the Psalms. The Psalms meets us right where we are with hope and with help. In the book of Psalms, we find almost every possible human experience of the heart. In the book of Psalms, we find triumphs, we find troubles, complaints, fears, we find confidence, prayers, and of course, praise. When life happens, one of the most encouraging books of the Bible that helps us make sense out of the madness is the book of Psalms. And so friends, with that, I want you to take your copy of God's Word and I want us to go this morning to Psalm 121 as we consider this message that I've entitled, When My Future is in Doubt. Friends, make no mistake, one of the most common anxieties that all of us share is anxiety about the future. You know, in the past five weeks alone, just listen to some of the questions that are circulating all around us. These questions that so many people are wrestling with. Questions like, will I have enough money to pay my bills, pay my mortgage, take care of my family? W will I still have a job next week? Am I going to lose my income? Am I going to lose my health insurance? Will, will my physical health take a turn for the worse? How am I going to make it through? Well, friends, today as we make a closer examination of Psalm 121, the psalmist is going to remind us that we are not alone on this journey called life. And our future is not left to chance. In fact, this ancient travel song we are going to study today is going to teach us four encouraging qualities of the God who goes with us. Well, friends, as we consider this famous psalm, what encouragement can we draw from it for our own Christian life journey? When life seems uncertain, when it seems that our future is in doubt, what does this ancient song teach us to remember? Well, friends, today we're going to take a deeper look at Psalm 121, and today we're going to examine four qualities of God's care for you and me. Four qualities of God's care care. And here's the first one we're going to see from the text this morning. First of all, God cares for me with a creator's omnipotence. Number one, God cares for me with a creator's omnipotence. Look at Psalm 121 and let's look at verses one and two together. Scripture says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Well, dear friends, as we come to God's word this morning here in Psalm 121, it's important for us to know right, right up front that Psalm 121 is actually part of a group of 15 psalms from Psalm 120 to Psalm 134. These psalms are grouped together and they are called the Psalms of Ascent. Now, these were special songs that Jewish people would often sing on their way up to Jerusalem. These travelers, these pilgrims, would be coming back to Jerusalem uh, for these required feasts and these special holy celebrations that would occur th about three times each calendar year. Now, friends, I know a lot of you uh, have shared with me many kinds of facts about Lancaster County. But friend, did you know that the city of Lancaster has an elevation of 368 feet above sea level? Now that might sound high to you, but the city of Jerusalem there in Israel sits at 2,700 feet above sea level. It's nestled there in the mountains. And so as, as Jewish pilgrims, as these Jewish worshipers would be traveling up into the city of Jerusalem for these various holidays and special feasts, they would often sing these songs of ascent. These are songs of going up. And they would sing these songs to help prepare their hearts for worship. Now, friend, I want you to imagine for a moment that you happen to be a Jewish traveler. You're a Jewish pilgrim. 
You don't live there in Jerusalem. You don't live in one of the nearby districts. You actually live some distance away. But because you're a faithful worshiper, you are here making this journey, and it's a long journey, and you're headed there towards Jerusalem. You start out off in the low-lying country, of course, and you're making your way uh, towards the mountains. You're making your way towards the city, ultimately, as your goal. But as you begin your journey, you begin to feel some of those twinges of anxiety. And why is that? Well, you feel a little anxiety because you don't know exactly what this trip will hold. Will you be attacked by wild animals on the way? Will you take a wrong turn? Will you get lost on some side road? Will you get jumped or attacked by thieves or highwaymen or some robbers who will beat you up and take your money and leave you for dead? You see, every good Jew planned to attend these feasts, but one's arrival at the feast was not 100% guaranteed. And so here in verse 1, notice the question is entering the psalmist's mind. I lift up my eyes to the hills. I'm traveling up into the mountains. I'm traveling up to this great city. Where is my help going to come from? He's asking, from where am I going to receive some help? Well, notice the answers in verse 2. My help comes from the Lord. From Jehovah God, the promise-keeping God, the same God who made a promise, this covenant promise to his people Israel, that they would forever be his people, he would forever be their God, the psalmist says, that's the one I look to. I look to the Lord for help. And notice, Christian friends, as soon as the Lord comes to mind, notice, his power is celebrated. The Lord who is going to give help, he is the omnipotent, the all-powerful creator. You see it there, the maker of heaven and earth in verse 2. Now that important phrase puts a bright shining light on God's character. It reminds us that our God is all-powerful. He is sovereign over all things. He's sovereign over heaven. He's sovereign over earth. Why? Because he is the creator of those very things. You know, friends, this phrase who made heaven and earth. This is so important for us to, to believe and hold as true. This is so fundamental to what we believe about God. You know, this, this truth about God as the creator, you know, it appears so often in so many of our, of our Christian creeds and our famous confessions of faith. Maybe some of you as young people or even as children uh, had a chance to interact with. Maybe some of you even had to memorize portions of the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed is one of the oldest statements of the Christian faith. And many of you will remember that the Apostles' Creed actually opens with these words, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Well, Christians, just like the psalmist you and I need to rejoice that the place from which our help comes is not a human place, but a heavenly place. Our ultimate help comes not from anything that is created, but from the Creator. Psalm 46 verse 1 says this, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6 says also, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. So believer, I want you to be encouraged today. Be encouraged that this wonderful song of these pilgrims on their journey, this is a song that parallels your own Christian life journey. When you think about your life's journey, when you think about the unknown, when you think about this uncertain future that's out ahead of you, remember, you are not alone because your God cares for you. This powerful God who spoke all these things into existence, this powerful God is your powerful helper. Now let's move on and I want you to see a second encouraging quality of God's care. A second quality of God's care. And it's this. 
God cares for me with a shepherd's watchfulness. God cares for me with a shepherd's watchfulness. Look again in our text. We're here in the book of Psalms. We're in Psalm 121. Look at verse 3. The psalmist writes, He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Now, Christian friends, as we move forward here in the text into verses 3 and 4, I I want you to see how the psalmist makes a transition. He makes a transition from first person to second person language. In verses 1 and 2, he had said, I, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From from where does my help come? But now verses 3 and 4, there's this shift of language. Now now it becomes to the second person. He says, he will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. So it may be that here the psalmist is perhaps speaking to another member of his traveling party. Maybe he's speaking to a family member. Maybe he's speaking to another person, a close friend even. Or perhaps uh, some Bible scholars think that perhaps the psalmist is just speaking to himself trying to speak to himself and and put some fresh confidence into his heart for this journey. But friends, the important point not to miss is here in these verses, we get another aspect of God's great care for us. And that is that God is a keeper. He's a keeper. In other words, just like those ancient shepherds, God is diligent to keep us. He is diligent to keep you under his watchful care. Did you notice there in verse 3, the psalmist says, He will not allow your foot to be moved. I know some of you are using some more modern translations. Some of the other translations have a different phrase there. The NIV has it this way, He will not let your foot slip. And that's the idea there. You see, friends, back in ancient times, the, the, the times of the Bible, the paths and the roads that people traveled on were often very, very treacherous. I mean, there were no handrails back then. Uh, there were no guardrails on the sides of roads. Uh, they did not have all of the modern precautions and safety measures like we have today. Back then, roads were, were crude and they were rough and they were often uh, made by hand. Many of these roads were narrow and they were steep and they were rocky. And in fact, many of them were, were right up against a, a dangerous ledge or e- even a cliff. So just imagine, here you are, you're, you're a traveler, you're a pilgrim, and you're, you're on your way to the city of Jerusalem, and, and you've got your clothing with you, you've got some food and provisions with you, maybe you've got all your belongings kind of strapped on your back, and, and it's kind of heavy, and you're, you're trying to keep your balance, and, and here you are walking on these treacherous paths up the sides of dangerous hills and slopes, and you're just trying not to fall over into the cavern, you know, just losing one step could mean losing your life. And so with that, the psalmist says, take heart. Take heart. God will not allow your foot to slip. Well, friends, there's no doubt that not only is the psalmist speaking here about the literal journey that God's people would make to Jerusalem, but metaphorically, he's also speaking about the way God watches over our entire life's journey. God watches over our entire spiritual life journey. Here you are, Christian friend. You are on this journey. You are going from here to glory. And the Bible gives you this encouragement that every step along the way, God is watching you. God is keeping watch and care over you. We read over in Psalm 100. The Bible says there that we are God's people We are the sheep of his pasture, and just like a good shepherd keeps watch over his sheep, he keeps them on the path, he keeps them from stumbling into danger and and injury, so the Bible says that God is watching us. He is watching over you and me, dear friend. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 8 reminds us that God is always guarding the paths of justice and watching over the way of his saints. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 26 says, For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. 
Friends, I want you to notice one other thing here at the end of verse 3. Look at the end of verse 3 there. The psalmist says, He who keeps you will not slumber. He will not slumber. So not only is God guarding you, protecting you, keeping you, the Bible says God never tires of keeping you. You know, if you've had your driver's license for any length of time, then, then you certainly know the experience of what it's like having to drive when you are dead tired. You remember that feeling? You remember the feeling of having to drive when you are just so physically exhausted? Here you are sitting behind the wheel, and what starts to happen? Your head, your head starts bobbing up and down, and your vision starts to get blurry. Your, your eyes get real itchy, and, and, and your eyelids just keep closing. When I was in college, I worked with a, with a young man who had fallen asleep behind the wheel of his car three different times. And all three times, he crashed this car into the ditch. Man, think about this guy crashing his car all these various times. Here was a guy who simply could not keep his own life. But friends, the same cannot be said of God. We can't say that of God. This text reminds us God never gets drowsy. He, his eyes never get heavy. He never uh, becomes sleepy. His, his mind never becomes clouded. Why? Because he never needs sleep. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 20 says, Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. So take heart this morning, believers. Take heart. Because you are God's child, He is watching you around the clock. Now, does this mean if something bad happens to you that somehow God was off duty? Well, certainly not. Certainly not. The Bible teaches us that, that God often allows adversity. God often permits trouble and hardships to come into our lives so that we might increase, that we might increase in our faith, we might draw closer to Him, that we might grow perhaps in our patience or even our trust of Him. But the point of these verses that we're looking at is simply this, as Dr. D.A. Carson once said, the perils, the perils are unknown, but the security is certain. So Christian, let these verses today, let them bring good medicine into your heart today. What a tremendous encouragement this is, that God cares for you as a good shepherd. He knows your name. He knows your tendencies. He knows your comings and your goings. He carefully watches over your every step. There is never a step when his eye isn't on you. Well, as we move forward here into verses 5 and 6, let's consider now a third characteristic of God's care, a third characteristic of our caring God. Here's number three if you're taking some notes. God cares for me with a guardian's vigilance. Number three, God cares for me with a guardian's vigilance. Look at our text at verse five. The psalmist writes, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. Now, Christian friends, what is so amazing about this psalm is the way that we see that word keep be repeated again and again in reference to God. I wonder if you'll notice between verse 3 and the end of the psalm, that word keep, the Hebrew word for keep or some form of it, is used six times. So over and over, the psalmist is encouraging us that God Almighty, Jehovah God, our God, He's not just the keeper of Israel, He's also the keeper of the individual believer as well. And so here in verses 5 and 6, we see another facet of God's character, that He's a guardian. He, he's a protector. Look at verse 5 there. The psalmist actually uses this great little metaphor, the metaphor of shade. Shade. He says, the Lord is your shade at your right hand. 
Now, of course, everyone knows that on a hot summer, July or August day, on one of those blistering days outside, one of the things that you need most is shade. It is the shade that protects you, not, not only from sunburn on your skin, but of course that shade protects you from even more deadly things like sunstroke or heat exhaustion. You know, as long as I live, I will never forget my very first summer of youth ministry. It was the summer of 1999, and my wife Heather and I were leaders on a youth group trip. We were taking a group of teenagers to Ocean City, Maryland. And of course, uh, Ocean City, Maryland is, is kind of my stomping ground and have been there many times, so it was great. It was great to be in the ocean, great to be on the boardwalk, eating steamed crabs. It was just a wonderful trip. But what I remember most about that trip is when two of our students decided that they didn't need any sun protection. They refused to put on any sunscreen. They refused to spend any of the day taking shelter under the umbrellas. Well, you can guess what happened. When we drove home the following night, those two guys were sunburned so badly they were turning purple. Well, believers, here in our text, the psalmist says that God is our shade. He is our shade. Or in other words, God is our protection from harm. But not only is he our protection, did you notice? The psalmist says that he is our protection close at hand. He, he is near. This idea of the right hand has the idea of a proximity of closeness. So God is our protection close at hand. He's at the right hand. In other words, it means God's protection is always nearby. He, he's as close to us as if he were the very shadow itself on the ground. He is that close. He is that near. And so the Bible is teaching us that God, our protector, he's not far off in some corner of the galaxy. No, the Bible says he is near. He is the protection, even at your right hand. He's right there, the very place where you are, the place of your greatest need. God is as close to us as those secret service agents are close to the president. Oh, Christian friend, are you being encouraged this morning? Is your soul being touched by what you're hearing today from God's word? Praise God for the way that he cares for us. Verse 6 goes on to tell us there, it doesn't matter whether we face the dangerous days or the notorious nights. God will always be our nearby protector. The Bible says that God stands guard round the clock with protection for his people. You remember Psalm 91 in verse 5? Scripture says there, You will not fear the terror of the night nor of the arrow that flies by day. So here's the point, Christian friend. Don't you ever buy into Satan's lie that God is somewhere far off and his lie that would say that God isn't near or caring or involved in your life. Friend, Scripture says that God is near. He is right there. He is at your right hand every moment of every day. He is guarding you. He is protecting you. He is keeping you as his own precious child. So friend, grasp that truth today. Grasp it, believe it, and let it encourage your heart. Well, let's review. So far we've learned that when my future feels like it's in doubt, we need to remember God cares for us. God cares for us. He cares for us with the Creator's power, with a shepherd's watchfulness, with a guardian's vigilance. But then finally, God cares for me with a caretaker's diligence. Number four, God cares for me with a caretaker's diligence. Look at verse seven. We're in Psalm 121, verse seven. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. 
Well, Christian friends, as we've been stepping through these verses this morning, we really have been ascending a beautiful staircase, as it were. We're, we're going up these steps together and we're, we're seeing this full picture, the full widescreen look of God's concern and care for us. And now we get to verses 7 and 8. We're really up at the top of the staircase. And, and what quality of God's care do we see here? Well, we see not only does God watch and guard and protect, but we see here that God is going to do it for all eternity. Look at that word, shall. Did you see it there? We read it a number of times. Pay attention to that word, shall. Verses 5 and 6, we read there, the Lord is your keeper. He is your shade on your right hand. Remember, the word is is present tense. That's a present tense word. It means right now. But we got to verses 7 and 8, and now we find the focus shifts slightly to now the future. The Lord shall preserve you from evil. He shall preserve your soul. He shall preserve your, your going out, your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Christian friend, doesn't that encourage you today? Oh, how that ought to touch your heart and bring such comfort into your soul. God has not only declared his protection of you for here and now, but God has actually gone on record. He has gone on record in the scriptures that he's going to preserve you forever. Just like those museum caretakers are given charge of a, of a precious diamond, or they're, they're given charge of a, of a priceless painting. Their job is to make sure that it's properly cared for, that it's protected, that it's given a home, that it's always sheltered from danger and destruction. Friend, that is what God says he will do for you. He says he will do it today, and he'll do it tomorrow, and he'll do it forever. Friends, what more confidence do we need than this? God promises to watch over us on our journey. Yes, we are these journeying pilgrims. We're on this journey from here to heaven, and God gives us his promise that he is going to protect us from all permanent harm for all time. Now listen, Christian. Yes, of course, there are going to be difficult things and challenging circumstances that come bursting upon your life like a storm. And difficult things are occasionally going to come sweeping upon you. But friend, I want to remind you today that there is a difference between hurt and harm. There's a difference between hurt and harm. Sometimes God permits things to come into your life that will hurt. They will hurt for a time. But listen, you need to remember that the sting is just temporary. Sometimes the hurt is allowed to come into your life to teach you a lesson or to strengthen your faith or to help you draw closer to God. But listen, even when life brings hurt, God gives you his promise that you will never experience eternal harm. Eternal harm will never come to you because he is the caretaker that is preserving your life. Oh, friends, the conclusion of this psalm, verses 7 and 8, they, they, it ought to stir up such, such hope in you this morning, such confidence, such trust, such praise for this amazing God. Just like the main character in John Bunyan's famous story, The Pilgrim's Progress, remember that famous character Christian? Christian was on his long journey to the celestial city, Christian friend, I want you to know today, you're going to make it. God is bringing you to the celestial city. God has given you his word, and he backs it up with his sovereign care that your future is not in doubt. You are under his loving care, and by his grace, you will make it. You will make it from here to heaven. Hallelujah. We give praise to his name. Dear friend, I want to just pause right now to ask you such an important question. Friend, I would ask you today, have you entrusted yourself to God's protection and care? Can you honestly say that 
you know God's fatherly love by experience? I'm asking today, friend, are you a Christian? I'm asking, are you truly in God's family? Do you genuinely have that relationship with God through Jesus, his son? Oh, friend, the Bible says if you are not a Christian. The Bible says if you have never trusted in Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins, then right now, right now, God is not disposed toward you as a loving father. Rather, right now, God is disposed to you as a just judge. And he is prepared to pronounce the guilty verdict over your life because of your sin, because of your rebellion against him. Friend, there is only one way. Only one way to change that broken relationship between you and a holy God. And that is for you to turn from your sins and trust in the Savior that God provided. And that is Jesus Christ. Friend, call out to Jesus Christ today. Call out to Jesus in prayer and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Cleanse me. Lord Jesus, I need to come into a relationship with you. Lord Jesus, come into my life today. Change me and cleanse me and make me new. Lord Jesus, I want to turn away from my sins and I want to turn to you and I want to follow you for the rest of my life. I want to be in the family of God. Dear friend, you can know for sure and you can know today that your sins are forgiven and that heaven is your home and that God loves you with his fatherly care. Friend, you need to come to Christ by faith. Listen, maybe you have questions about that. Maybe you have questions about becoming a Christian or maybe you'd like to talk to someone or maybe you'd like to have someone pray with you. Well, friend, I would just encourage you uh, you can send us a message through Facebook Messenger. We'd be glad to receive that message and interact with you. I would invite you, friend, you can even send me an email. Send me an email. Even today, you can send it to ryan at rightsdale.org. Dear friend, would you take that step today? Would you put your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Friend, take that step today because nothing is more important in your life than having salvation, than having your sins forgiven in Jesus and coming into that relationship with God, your Heavenly Father. Well, friends, as we draw to a close this morning, we're just getting started on this new series, When Life Happens. For the next few Sundays, we're going to look at some tremendous psalms that can give us hope, that can give us help when life throws the worst at us. And what better place to start than right here in Psalm 121, a pilgrim song that gives praise to the God of help. So believers, before you launch out into a brand new week, spend some time, spend some time even today, sinking these truths into your spirit. If you're worried, if you're fearful, if you're losing sleep about tomorrow or what's coming next around the bend, dear friend, remember the truth we've learned today. God is there and God cares for you. He cares for you with a creator's omnipotence, with a shepherd's watchfulness, with a guardian's vigilance, with a caretaker's diligence. Christian friend, you may not know what the future holds, but you do know who holds the future. And God promises to care for you every step of the way. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Our Father, we thank you so much for the inspired word of God that speaks such hope and help into our hearts. Lord, thank you for this opportunity that we've had to study your word today, to, to learn more about your incredible character and the care that you have for us. Lord, thank you for what we've read and studied today. And I pray for even those who are watching today who are filled up with anxiety 
and fear and they're worried about what the future will hold. Lord, I pray today that they be reminded from your precious word, Lord, that you are there and that you care. Thank you so much for what we've heard today. And I pray that, Lord, just new hope would spring within our hearts. And if there is someone today who's listening who doesn't know Jesus Christ, Father, I pray that you'd show them the brokenness of their hearts, show them their sin, show them Jesus, the Savior. Show them the love of Jesus and the forgiveness that comes through, the, through Jesus, the forgiveness of their sins. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you that even when life happens, we have answers, we have hope, we have a God that we can turn to. So Lord, we give you the praise today and we lift up our eyes to you when we need help the most. And we give you the praise this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank God today for speaking hope into our hearts through His Word. We know these are challenging times and we all have hectic schedules, but one thing that all of us can do is get into God's Word every day this week, meet Him in prayer so that we can find the encouragement and help that we're looking for. Speaking of Bible study, you can jump over to Facebook right now at the conclusion of this service and meet up there with Dee Henry, one of our high school Sunday school teachers, and you can meet there uh, with Dee over on Facebook for Sunday School Live Online. This will be a great Bible study time that will reach both students and adults. If you haven't had a chance to visit our online giving portal, this week is a great chance for you to do that. Give your gift at wrightsdale.org giving or send your offering to the church here at the address printed below. And be sure to join us this Wednesday night for Prayer Connect Live over on Facebook at 7 o'clock p.m. We've had some wonderful times of prayer and encouragement on Wednesday nights. So many people jumping in, joining us online. We're going to have a special time with some of our moms this week. So be sure to join us for Prayer Connect Live at 7 o'clock p.m. on this Wednesday night. We look forward to seeing you then.